You know, about six years ago, I began studying. I picked up a book in a bookstore on quantum mechanics, and I read the cover and looked at the table of contents, and I found it intriguing. So I read the book, and as I read it, it whetted my appetite to know more, so I bought another book. Long story short, I found myself in the odd place where I was reading and studying about quantum mechanics as a hobby. But as time passed, I began to realize the meaning of quantum science, of the quantum world, and I began to see that there was an overlap between quantum science and all the things that my faith had taught me through the years. The further I went, I saw that it was more than an overlap. I began to see that this quantum life that I had read about was really an unseen world that gave rise to everything in the seen world. Let, 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 me, let me explain it this way as we, I get going with this, uh, this, this thing on quantum life, I call it. There is an invisible world that exists at a subatomic level. If you zoom in close enough with an electron microscope and you go beneath the molecules down to the atoms, down to the subatomic particles, you'll reach quarks and, and, and you'll finally zoom into the place where all you see is pure energy. You'll see particles popping in and out of existence. Science is now telling us that everything that looks material is really just an expression of energy that has slowed down to the point that we can see it. In that quantum world, in that invisible world, the rules are very different. The rules in the quantum world don't function like they do in the physical world. For instance, in the quantum world, everything is energy, it's not in physical form, and that energy is very intense. So they say this energy is the power that caused everything that exists as matter to materialize. Some have even gone so far as to say that this energy can be expressed as pure love. In this quantum world, they've learned through tests like the double slit experiment that I may talk about more sometime, that it is by the power of sustained intention, by faith and observation, that things come into manifestation. This is science. Scientists, that's the double slit experiment. They've learned through science that your words have physical power. There's a Japanese uh, scientist named uh, 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 Masaru Emoto. Uh, he did some studies. Look it up on the internet. He did some studies where he spoke words, sometimes positive, sometimes negative words, to bottles of water, containers of water, and then he froze the water and he examined the ice crystals and he learned that positive words brought beauty to those ice crystals. There was a symmetry there. Disapproving uh, words that cursed and, and put down and, and, and insulted created ice crystals that had no symmetry, but they, in fact, sometimes had blemishes and stains in it. So science says to us, your words have power. Science in the quantum world has shown us that our intention, our belief, our expectation, the point being, the more I studied this, I started seeing that what scientists call the quantum world Max Planck, by the way, is the father of quantum physics. He called it the Matrix. He's the one that inspired the Matrix movies. What they're calling the Matrix, what they're calling the quantum world, is the same thing that Jesus called the kingdom of God. It is this ultimate reality that you cannot see with your eyes, an invisible world within which everything else exists and from which everything else was created and by which everything else that you can see is sustained. So I talk a lot about quantum life. Some of you are familiar with my teaching through the last decades. My first book was called Grace Walk. And in that book, I widened the circle of understanding from my evangelical knowledge that I'd had as a child that of who Jesus is and who God is and how he expressed himself through Christ. I talked in Grace Walk, my first book and my ministry about who we are in Christ. And then as the circle continued to widen, I became to understand more and more, I gained, gained more and more knowledge and began to understand this identity message. So first it's the who, who Christ is. And then the bigger circle with Grace Walk is who we are. And now I'm teaching this quantum life I teach it every day, a live group on, on the internet. Quantum life, and now this quantum life is how we live it. So here's the thing I want you to see. Grace keeps getting bigger and bigger. 
I want you to see this. I'm moving further into grace, and I want to take you there if you're willing to go with me. First, all we know is Jesus loves me, this I know. And we know who he is, and that's good to know. But then as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, as the Apostle Peter said, then we begin to understand not just who he is, but we begin to understand who we are. And then now we're talking about how we are to live in this matrix, in this quantum life, which is the same as saying in the Christ life, in the kingdom of God, we're learning how to live it. And so I'll be sharing some things with you here uh, in the days to come about how we live this life inside the matrix. Now, you've got a choice. I, I said the matrix. You remember the matrix movie? You remember where Neo is talking to Morpheus and he's got the red pill and the blue pill. And, he's, and Morpheus is trying to encourage him to have the audacity and the courage to step off the deep end and get into the matrix and learn some things he didn't already know. And there's that epic scene, that iconic scene in that movie where Morpheus says to, to Neo, he's, he's got the red pill and the blue tip pill. And he says, you take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland and I'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Well, I'm going to tell you, the place of humanity in the flow of the world history right now has brought us to that place where we face that same kind of choice today. And I'm going to say that even as believers in Christ, you have that choice. You have a choice to make. You can lock down and, hey, thank God for what you learned in Sunday school and church and what your parents taught you. I had godly parents, believers in Christ. I'm thankful for it. But, you know, there's a lot to be learned in quantum life. Quantum life is an invisible world that controls everything that can be seen. And I want to encourage you as we bring this to a close to open your mind and say, am I going to take the blue pill or the red pill? <laughs> and I want you to be willing to grow and go forward as we learn more about this in the coming days.